Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, during this talk, I would like to share my experiences on building a Shiny application for expert elicitation. We have the, developed this application for the European Food Safety Authority um, because they were interested in, uh, for example, measuring the toxic effects of a spray for killing mosquitoes. Um, but similar uh, procedures um, occur in many other contexts, such as uh, personnel selection or um, measuring uh, the temperature or better forecasting the temperature in Toulouse uh, for next Wednesday. Uh, what you could do, uh, for example, for the toxic effects, is dive into the literature and um, search for studies that measure the toxic effects. But often the conditions are um, very different across studies. Also concentrations uh, might differ. Um, so um, what I often prefer to do then is to um, create a panel of experts um, which give their opinion based on the available literature. So I will first explain the workflow of such an expert elicitation as we have implemented it. So in the first stage, um, the facilitator uh, will create a session which includes um, the experts that are defined for this specific session, such as their email address, um, also the parameters that need to be elicited, um, the cut points you would like the experts to judge on, and um, you may also want to <coughs> attach some PDFs, some literature uh, or evidence dossiers. In the first phase, um, then uh, the range is being defined. So um, the elicitator, so the facilitator will send invites uh, to the experts who will then um, elicitate on the parameter of interest. And when all experts have provided their answers, um, these results can automatically be summarized in a report. So you start with defining a minimum and a maximum. Um, if no consensus has been found after this first round, you will repeat the whole procedure. Uh, if a consensus has been found, you can move to the next phase. So in this phase, uh, quantiles um, between the agreed minimum and maximum will be uh, elicited. Um, so in this case, we have four quartiles, the uh, Q1, median, and Q3. So here again, the same procedure, sending invites, elicitation. Um, if no agreement is found, uh, procedure is repeated. And if an agreement is found, we are there, and we can close the session. Um, during the stack, I will focus on some specific features we have been working on. Um, first of all, for the visualizations, we have been using draggable bar plots uh, using Plotly. And we also found a way to combine distributions of all expert solicitations, which may guide you in finding a consensus. And for the automation, we have um, set up a system to automatically send emails using MailR from within this Shiny application. And um, we also uh, were willing to define a specific order to fill out the quantiles because it has been proven in psychology that for that specific order, um, results are known to be least biased. For the deployment, we made use of Shiny Proxy. Um, as you may know, I'm from Open Analytics, so it's one of our products. And um, this allowed us to um, easily define um, authorization for this specific application. And um, we also made use of Docker volumes to save results in a single folder per session. If everything goes well, I would like to give a short demonstration of the application. Um, So the application is available online. 
Um, let's assume that all the administrative stuff has already been done, so session has been created, and that the experts have already agreed on uh, values for the range. So we are in this phase now where we would like to invite the experts for the quantile elicitation. So uh, the application basically has four uh, tab pages um, if you are a facilitator, so if you have a lot of user rights. If you're only an expert, you will see only this specific uh, tab page. So I would like to load the session on forecasting the temperature for Toulouse next Wednesday. I have defined three experts and I'm also a facilitator. Um, you can see that currently no, none of the parameters are open for elicitation, um, but for the temperature, the range has already been defined. These are the cut points we would like the experts to judge on. Um, of course, the minimum and the maximum have already been defined, and now only those uh, three quartiles in this specific order need to be elicited. So for the parameter temperature, I would like to send invites and automatically create a new elicitation round. So this email will be sent to yeah, just me um, with a default subject and a default message. Uh, most importantly from this message is that it includes a link which redirects the experts um, to the correct uh, session and um, only that, um, that session that they have access to. So I can confirm. I get a message that emails has been sent. Now, It's due to the Azerty keyboard, sorry. Um, so if I go to the elicitation in the meantime, um, I will see that now you have a summary here of the parameter I need to elicit, so the temperature, and a table which guides me in which uh, order I need to elicit the values for the maximum temperature next week in Toulouse. Um, so let's say it will be 35 maybe. Um, if I make a mistake, for example, stating that it will be 33 for the third quartile, I will get an error message that it should be from small to large, of course. Or if it's outside the range, it's also not accepted. Uh, if this is all said and done, um, I get a bar plot. Uh, which so shows me the distribution that I think the temperature will follow. Um, if now I want to adjust any of these values, um, the values in the table are automatically updated um, and the other way around. So I like to see rounded values, so I can update these to 34. Yeah, I think it will be quite hot. Um, okay, so I've saved my um, values. I can enter new values, which will be appended to the previous ones. Only the most recent ones will always be shown in the application. Um, I've made another session where all other experts have already 
filled out their values, um, which is more interesting to show which, how, we, how we combine these results. So you can overlay the results of all experts or have a look um, per expert, how they think the temperature will be. Um, but most interestingly, you can also combine results of all experts. So this gives you one general distribution. And then you can select which models you would like to fit to um, these densities. Um, and I've selected only the continuous right bounded because I think it's quite clear that it's right bounded in this case. Um, okay, so when we have entered all those values, we can try to find a consensus uh, for the final twos. For this specific parameter, so now it's open and we're in the first quantiles round. I would like to end the elicitation fail phase. Um, and what I'm uh, suggesting here as values, these are the quartiles from the best fit of the selected distributions in the previous step. So um, I think the democracy Um, and we can accept these values, uh, which will then close uh, elicitation for this specific parameter. Okay, so it's now ended. This is only the demo, but um, I think most of you are also interested uh, what's the R code behind how we have built these things. Um, so I will go over some topics in more detail. Um, sending emails, uh, if you know the R package mail R, it's quite straightforward. Once you set up an SMTP, um, then you can just take um, the input object for the subject and a message from your Shiny application um, to send these emails automatically from within the application which is more convenient than copying all the information outside the application, of course. Um, for entering quantiles, we have made use of the um, package R Hanson table. Um, and the trick here is to uh, define which cell can be edited and the color of that cell by a reactive object. So you will see here that the row that can be edited is a reactive object as well as which color it should have, whether it's green or red. For the bar plot, um, it took us a while to get that one working, um, but in the end, it's a very simple option of our plotly. You just need to know. Um, so you can do, uh, add some vertical lines in the uh, plot by using the shapes option in the layout. And then um, the user can drag these lines if you um, state in the configuration that the shape positions should be editable. Um, and then it's just a matter of um, transferring values from the plot to the table and the other way around. For combining distributions, um, you can uh, transform this table of cut points into a table which um, defines for each of the entered values what was the cumulative distribution, where you give each expert equal weight. So that is why we think it's the most democratic way um, to define an overall distribution. Then you can fit uh, a range of distributions to these uh, densities and retain the best fit distribution to suggest some agreed quantile values. So in this case, uh, we define these uh, three values. Uh, for authorization, as I said, we made use of Shiny Proxy, so we can directly um, retain the username from, passed from the LDAP login to the Shiny application with this environment variable. Um, so once you know the login name, um, as you might have seen, it's printed at the top 
of the application. You can check for uh, facilitator rights, whether it's in a fixed list of people, um, because we know in advance who are the facilitators. While for the experts, it's a bit more complicated because they differ per session. Um, so they are defined by the facilitator and they are checked when logging in, whether they are in the uh, experts list of that specific session they want to enter. The expert um, only has access to the elicitation while the facilitator has much more options. For saving the results, we made use of a Docker volume. Um, why? Because it's not a single rectangular file that we would like to save. Um, and we would also like to have persistent data storage because um, yeah, such an elicitation procedure can take weeks or months. So it's not convenient to save that um, just during the active session. Um, we're logging multiple files, um, as you can see here. And at the bottom, I've printed how such a elicitation file looks like. Um, so it saves the username, parameter, and quantile values with a timestamp, which allows you to um, export these data outside the Shiny application if you want to use them later on. So um, this application is available online. Uh, provided you have an account, which should be quite easy to create. Um, the source code is also available on Zenodo, if you search for expert elicitation. Um, I'm very welcome to answer your questions right now or via email. Um, so the only thing I would like to do now is thank you all for your attention.